Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have our next video in statistical thermodynamics now that we understand how to calculate Stirling's approximation. So let's take advantage of that and now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the enthalpy of one mole of gas molecules evenly distributed. Essentially we can see here that the enthalpy of one mole of gas molecules when they're all in one little corner of the container the enthalpy would be zero. This would be, of course, a very unlikely scenario. This is the more likely scenario when they're all evenly distributed and the enthalpy of that one mole of molecules is 446 joules per Kelvin. How did we come up with that number? Well, we start as follows. We start with the equation that the enthalpy is equal to K, that's the Boltzmann's constant, times the natural log of W. So, what is K again? Well, K is defined right here and W is n factorial that's only of course for the evenly distributed situation where n is the number of molecules in the sample in this case that would be one mole of molecules Avogadro's number of molecules here's the equation for Stirling's approximation that we showed you how to use in the previous video and so what we're going to do is we're going to replace n by the number of molecules in the volume in this case will be Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 so when we take the natural log of that number ooh I forgot to put one thing in there of course I need the factorial in there and let me put the factorial in there and so the natural log of W because W is n factorial so I forgot the factorial symbol in there so the natural log of one mole of molecules factorial is equal to Avogadro's number times the natural log of that number minus then of course we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 which is n right here plus one half times the natural log of 2 pi times Avogadro's number then of course we grab a calculator and now it's doable there's no way you'll ever be able to figure out what this number is equal to when we don't take the natural log of that but once we take the natural log the number is proportionally a lot smaller and so here we can see that Avogadro's number times the natural log of Avogadro's number is equal to this minus Avogadro's number plus this now notice how small this number is which came from this term when the number n is very large now when the number is 2 or 3 or 5 or something like that then this term is actually still somewhat significant but you can see here that this term now becomes completely insignificant so essentially we can say that for large numbers the natural log of n factorial is simply n times the natural log of n minus n and we can simply drop that portion of the equation see it doesn't need to it doesn't belong there with very large numbers of n so when we then uh, combine all that we then find that the natural log of, of the of the uh, <laughs> the natural log of Avogadro's number factorial is equal to this number right here 3.236 times 10 to the 25th now that means that the natural log of W again W is equal to n factorial the natural log of that which goes into our equation right here is equal to the natural log of n factorial which is equal to this number we just calculated now when we want to calculate the enthalpy of the situation we have one mole of molecules and maybe I just want to put down there one mole so we can clearly see that that's how many molecules are in the container the enthalpy of that will be K times the natural log of W when we now know what the natural log of W is equal to now we multiply that times Boltzmann's constant and that's where we get the 446 joules per Kelvin so that is the statistical enthalpy or the enthalpy of the statistical thermodynamics of the situation where we have that many molecules evenly distributed throughout the container now they're all pushed into one little corner of the container enthalpy would be zero and that's what it is and you can see of course when we go from the unnatural state of having all the molecules in one little corner of the container which is not going to happen essentially not even in a billion years or 10 million years entropy would be zero and then of course the entropy increases to the most probable state where they're all evenly distributed throughout the container and that would then be the entropy and that is how that is calculated did it before Brian came home